you know the feeling. It's 6 p.m. and you're staring inside of the fridge wondering what you can pull together to make dinner, but you don't have any time or energy to whip up something other than a bowl of cereal or a plate of random snacks from the pantry. So you order takeout or delivery again, shell out more money than you would have spent on groceries, and tell yourself tomorrow will be different. Sound familiar? If so, that's totally okay. We've all felt that way before, myself included. Gosh, I remember back before I started meal planning and everything felt like a scramble. I get home from work, usually late and usually exhausted, and stare into the abyss of my empty fridge, wondering if I could cobble something together out of a slice of cheese and two packets of hot sauce. I know we've all been in that boat a time or two. And that's why today we're talking about meal planning. In this video, we'll cover why meal planning is so beneficial, whether you're a family of one or a family of five. We'll talk about how to stay consistent and make meal planning a part of your regular weekly routine. And I'm gonna share my favorite meal planning tool with you. But before we get started, if you wanna start your days with more time management tips that help you live with intention, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Okay, so we've all probably heard about meal planning by now, especially if you have Pinterest. It seems like those cute little bento box lunch boxes or calendar printables are everywhere. And likely a lot of you have tried meal planning by now and given up. In fact, a lot of people say they're just not a fan of the whole meal planning thing. Or they tried it once or twice, but it never really stuck. Maybe meal planning just felt like yet another thing to do on your already too long list of things to do. And when it came down to it, it felt like it was more trouble than it was worth. Or maybe the pressure to make a whole meal plan and follow it to a T made mealtime feel flat out boring. Because let's face it, some days you just don't want to eat the same dinner you've already had two or three nights in a row. But deep down, you know that meal planning is something that you want to get the hang of eventually because you definitely don't like that feeling of being hangry when dinner or lunchtime rolls around. Well, meal planning can help you kick hangry to the curb by cutting out decision fatigue. According to research from Cornell University, we make around 277 decisions every single day just about food. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a lot to me. Okay, so that's 24 hours in a day, but we probably spend maybe seven or eight of them sleeping. So that's 16-ish hours that we're awake divided by, yeah, that's a lot. And the thing is, as we make more and more decisions throughout the day, we use up more and more of our limited decision-making fuel. So when mealtime rolls around, it can be totally draining just to figure out what to eat. Meal planning means you're deciding what you'll eat in advance. That cuts back on your decision-making in the moment and helps fight off some of that daily decision fatigue. Another great meal planning benefit, it can also help you save money. The average cost of food for the typical American family can be anywhere from $300 to $700 a month, depending on where you live. But regardless of your zip code, skipping out on meal planning means that you're probably spending more on food than you need to. Lately, it feels like every time we go to the grocery store, something else has become wildly expensive. Eggs, strawberries, milk. We've got big money goals in my family, so sticking to our monthly grocery budget is super important for us. Meal planning before the week kicks off gives us a chance to pick a combination of recipes that use some of the same ingredients. So we're buying fewer things at the store and we have less food left over that goes to waste. For example, maybe we'll do a batch of red beans and rice on Monday, a Louisiana classic. Then we'll have leftovers on Tuesday. We've still got rice in the pantry, so on Thursday, we might make something else that uses rice. Or maybe we'll make soft tacos for dinner on Taco Tuesday, and then we'll use the leftover tortillas to make snack wraps for lunch during the week. Planning in advance means that we can be strategic about grocery shopping and ingredient overlap. 
And when you meal plan, you're far less likely to spend your hard earned dollars on things you don't need. Impulse buys, extra takeout, and too many trips to Starbucks in one week. Guilty. Now, you may be thinking, Anna, all of this sounds great, but how do I actually do it? How do I plan the meals? So here's the next level secret, monthly meal planning. Now, I don't do this every single month, but I found that mapping out a month's worth of meals can be a huge stress reliever whenever I'm in a busier season of life. Meal planning on a weekly basis is awesome especially when you do your meal planning during your weekly planning session. You can choose meals based on the rhythm of your week. Busy day with lots of evening activities? Make a crock pot meal before you leave for work in the morning. Feel like you have some free time on Monday evening? Make two batches of whatever's on the menu so you can freeze it or eat it for the rest of the week. But when you're heading into an especially busy month, I'm looking at you May and December because there are so many activities, it seems like, in those two months. Zooming out and looking at the month as a whole can help you make fewer trips to the grocery store, buy some things in bulk to save money, and help you sprinkle your favorite recipes throughout the month so you're not eating the same three things week after week after week. That's actually what prompted us to try monthly meal planning. We realized we were eating like the same three recipes over and over again, week after week. Looking at the month as a whole enable us to space out our favorite tried and true recipes and look for some new meals to try. And don't worry if this doesn't sound like something that you would do or would work for you. Like with most things, there's no one size fits all way to do meal planning. The cool thing about meal planning is that you can tailor it to your lifestyle. You can try weekly meal planning for a few weeks, plan a month that's especially busy, go back to weekly and just do whatever works for you. Meal planning could also look like mapping out your dinners, but letting your lunches be more spontaneous. You can leave some open spaces for the week and still plan to enjoy one of your favorite takeout meals. When you plan for those things, you actually end up saving money in the process and you can stay on track a little better. Or your approach to meal planning can look like going all in and planning breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks in between, whatever floats your boat. There are a ton of tips and best practices out there to help you ace your meal planning routine. But I found that the real work happens outside of planning the actual meals themselves. What do I mean by that? A lot of the work that goes into meal planning isn't just picking what you want to eat and when. I mean, sure, that's the core of it but there's a little bit of prep involved before you can start setting your menu. That could look like working around everyone else's preferences and needs. Like when all of a sudden your kids decide they hate spaghetti. That could look like figuring out some meals that you can cook within a realistic amount of time available on your schedule. There's also wondering if what you cook will taste good as leftovers, frozen or in the fridge. There's figuring out if the ingredients work for your budget. It's a lot, I get it but it doesn't have to be that complicated. The trick is to mastermind your meals. And I've got a free downloadable checklist waiting for you at AnnaDKornick.com forward slash meals to help you out. After experimenting with planning a month's worth of my own family's meals, I realized that this method could be super helpful for my private time management coaching clients who wanted to be more intentional with their time, more present in the evenings with their family, and save money on their grocery bill in the process. Inside Mastermind Your Meals, you'll find seven simple ways to hack your meal planning routine. We're talking 30 meals in 30 minutes or less. No more guesswork or stress because mealtime should be enjoyable, right? This guide will help you get back to that, my friend. Again, you can grab that over at AnnaDKornick.com forward slash meals or pop down below to the link in the description and grab it there. All right, y'all, that's all I have for today. As always, thanks for watching. And if you liked this video, be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss my next video. I'll see you later.